Hi guys, welcome back to Baseball Card Buddies. This is a solo edition for me, one Baseball Card Buddy, because this is part two of a PSA reveal, and part one did not go very well. We had a disappointed Baseball Card Buddy Jr. who barely wanted to finish his video because we got a 6.5 Mark McGuire, which we thought should be at least a 10. Um, at least, I shouldn't say at least a 10, at least an 8. Um, so that was, he opened in a different video, if you want to take a look, um, three of his cards, which was a Mike Piazza rookie card, which ended up being miscut and not graded, which was disappointment number one. Disappointment number two was the Mark McGuire Stadium card, and the good one was Jacob deGrom, Gem Mint 10. So, there's another video out there, go watch it. This is the Old Timers video. What I'm about to open are 1947 Indian gum cards from the Gaudi Company of Boston. If that's not a mouthful, I don't know what is. And the other thing is, these cards are, what, 70, 80 years old? They're non-sports cards, so the universe of people who are actually into these cards is fairly slim, and it's only history geeks um, and other people who are into obscure non-sports cards that are probably into it and most of those people probably are not even watching videos about these types of things so maybe I introduce a new card genre to the audience maybe not but we're gonna get right into them and I have three cards they're from 1947 they're reprints from the 1933 version of the Indian Gum Company and the unique thing about these cards is they actually, that was the last Gaudi company um, of Boston. This was the last issue, 1947, because they didn't actually print original. It was the last issue of cards for the company. So that's pretty cool. All that, I'm going to get right into it. There should be three PSA um, Indian gum cards here that are uh, represented. You can see them right there, three of them. I'm going to kind of sneak um, them out of here, and I'm going to um, surprise all of us by um, just kind of going slowly to look at what they are actually graded. So I will get a little piece of paper, which I had for the last video, and I don't know where it is now. Uh, any piece of paper will do. How about the Little League notes from last week? That'll do. All right. So, I will grab my first one. Again, these are non-sports cards. They're Indian gum cards. Um, actually, why don't we go through the back first. So, this is a card. It's number 18. You can tell the difference between the 19... Um, uh, what did I say? 33 cards and 1947 cards because the reprints have black writing and the originals, I believe, have... Uh, either red or green writing. Um, it might be red. So these are really cool. They tell a lot of history. This particular card is the Warrior of Osage's Tribe. Um, gives you a little uh, Indian language there too. Uh, Tal Li means the wild wind. So it's a good specimen of an Osage's warrior. The crest on his head is made from tufts of deer hair and eagle's quills. His bow, sheaf of arrows, and shield indicate he's about to go on the warpath. In the detail there you can see it's from the Indian Gum Company, the original picture pack gum. This is one of a series of cards illustrating Indian and pioneer romantic days. Um, it's by the Gowdy Gum Company, Boston Mass, USA, makers of Oh Boy Gums. So, I'm going to tease everybody, and I'm going to start at the top, and I haven't even looked at this yet because I'm putting a piece of paper over it. So, we'll go down so you can actually see the card first. Again, these have wonderful color. Um, you can see, I mean, this card is almost 80, 90 years old, and the fact that it's still intact is remarkable, let alone the colors on these. You can see the red and the purple, and it is very vibrant, which is kind of why I like these. As well as the history, and they're super collectible. I just saw a bunch of them go on auction recently for thousands and thousands of dollars. Probably about ten or 12000 for the whole set, which I believe there's 112 of them. So... The verdict is, I think, because of the age of this card and um, kind of the condition, I'm going to say this is, they'll probably give it a four. I would be happy with a six. A six would be great. 
So let's see what they gave it. Ooh, a slap in the face right out of the gates. So this is a three, which is very good. Um, that is really lower than I would have liked. Um, but again, it's from 1947. So it is definitely an old card that has been through many a child's hands as an adult's hands and has probably been traded back and forth for years. Um, so there we go. A very good for the number 18 card in the 1947 Indian Gum reprint series. All right, that's number one. We'll put that one right up here. Only two more, so this video shouldn't be too long. And I apologize if I'm going on and on about the history of this. This is definitely a video for a random select viewing audience. So this one is the Warrior of the Comanche Tribe. This is number 19 in the series, um, and it says Hani the Beaver. So, a terrible warrior advancing with a flag of truce to meet an American regime regiment. Um, a white flag is a sign of truce among Indians, as well as the other nations. The tribe inhabited the interior of Texas. So, this is the warrior of the Comanche tribe who went into uh, the state of Texas. And again, you have your stats about the Indian gum and the Indian Gum Company, again, from Boston, Mass. So let's do, again, the sneak peek with the actual card. We'll come down, again, vibrant reds, real nice greens on here. This is, which many of the cards have, pictures of horses and then the actual um, tribe members doing their um, hunting, fighting in this case. Um, you can see the, uh, the mention of the white flag. So I don't know if this is the Comanche tribe giving up to uh, someone in battle, but you can see it's got the white flag as well as um, it actually looks, I don't know if that's a, gun, a long shotgun on the side there. That can't be, that must be for gunpowder. But he's got a bow and arrow um, and you can see he's got a headdress on there as well. So this is the Comanche Tribe, Indian Gum, 1947. Again, expect a four or a five, happy with a six. We just got a three, and this card actually looks a little less vibrant than the others, so maybe this gets a two, we'll see. And survey says, mm, a three. Looks like they're being consistent with their grading, especially if you hand them all in, they probably think they've all come from the exact same type of um, condition or era of uh, a card um, and again I didn't notice this the first time but you can see it says um, right here that it's a reissue so it's the Comanche tribe reissue keep in mind it's still 1947 so it was reissued in 47 originally from 33 um, I again think these are so cool because of how old they are and the history that they tell but it would have been better to get a higher grade so the first two I got are a three, um, and we have one more card, and I'll bring you right to it. This third card and last, and again, um, apologize that it's a, a not a sports uh, PSA reveal here, but this is uh, Chief of the Pawnee Tribe, Chief Sky Skoroka, Star of the Sky. Um, the Pawnees presented a clumsy appearance, but were unexcelled as horsemen. They cultivated fields of maize, pumpkins, melons, beans, and squashes, and invariably wore headdresses, although they were not needed for the warmth as in other tribes. So again, um, obscure history lesson here, but if you're into Native Americans as well as all the fighting and what went on back in the early pioneer days, these cards are very cool. This is number 11 out of the series, and we will do one last um, reveal. It will be great to get a surprise. Um, so here you go, the nice reds. This is actually the Pawnee tribe. So this is one of their leaders, presumably, and he's got feathers in his um, hair. 
you can see the cultural necklaces that he has, as well as the mention of the fur on the right hand side there that is actually um, used, it says not for, for warmth too often, but apparently uh, that's what he's got there. So let's get to the big drum roll and the last of the three cards, and it is a four. All right. Highest of the three, which um, truthfully, this one looks very well centered. Actually, now that I say that, it doesn't look very well centered compared to the others. I was going to say that's the difference between the four and the three. Um, not quite sure. So this one got a four. Um, I'll put them side by side. If you guys can see what a real difference between the three and the four would be. This one actually looks a little more faded than, well, this one looks faded, but this one looks the brightest. But you can see there's a nice border. It's a little heavier on that side than this. The bottom has spacing. But if you look at the bottom of this one, this one has no spacing, but I guess from the looks of it, maybe that's the way the better cards were, which was it had no white on the bottom because they gave this one a higher grade. Um, so either way, tell me what you think. If you are a baseball card fan and you see these cards and they're just bizarre to you, let me know. Um, it's good feedback. But again, if you're a collector and I am of all and a variety of cards, these are a really cool issue. Um, lots of history. Uh, these are very expensive cards. So if these were in higher grades, I mean, they'd be going for, I'd say, at least 100, 150, 200 bucks a piece. These are probably 40, 50, 60, 80 bucks a piece. So even these are collectible. And I can tell throughout my baseball card collecting, I'm probably going to try to put a complete set of one of these, either the reprints or the originals together, um, which will be a nice uh, challenge as a, a collector. So that's it for this episode. Please watch all of our episodes. And again, we're called Baseball Card Buddies, not Indian Gum Chewing Gum Company or buddies, but either way, hope you enjoyed the video. Feedback is welcomed. Visit us at BaseballCardBuddies.com, and we'll see you soon.